Hey everybody, welcome to number three in the series of Vibrational Cellular Experiences. My name is Dawn Bennett. I'm the best-selling author of The Touch Crisis, and I'm also a relationship coach and an emotional freedom techniques professional. I've been working with clients around their physical healing and emotional healing for 23 years now. One of the biggest problems that is really coming clear and that people are starting to really research right now is all that often what we feel emotionally gets stored in our body, but we try to deal with our emotions or we try to deal with our physical symptoms separately instead of combining them together. So have you ever gotten worried about something that's gonna happen in the future and you feel maybe a little upset in your stomach or a little panic or anxiety feeling in your chest? Have you ever had a physical response to a thought that you had? That's because your brain cannot tell the difference between past, present, and future. Isn't that amazing? And so when we have thoughts or when we're in an experience that's emotional, if we don't deal with it right away, it gets pushed inside of our body. We store it somewhere because we have to store it somewhere. Right? If you think about the nervous system as a loop of energy, and all of a sudden something stops that energy from going, a grief, an anger, a trauma, a sudden experience of any kind, and we don't let it go. It gets shoved there, it stays there. And it's connected now with that memory or with similar memories because our brain likes to do this thing called the generalization effect. So it puts everything in a giant box kind of, and so every time we think about, you know, relationship struggles, perhaps we think about this, you know, this whole box of relationship struggles starts popping open and all these reasons why relationships are hard start popping out at us, right? So when we talk about vibrational cellular memory about our relationships, we start talking about where's the stored emotional pain from your past relationships and how is it influencing your current relationship now? So for example, if I have grief, grief, excuse me, if I have grief over a lost relationship, and this can be like something like my mom died or my dad died or my favorite dog died. And I haven't processed that grief because I was taught that it wasn't appropriate to express grief or that I should get over it faster. Or maybe my culture told me that, you know, you just, you just, you don't express that. You don't show tears. Men don't cry, you have to be rigid. Or maybe you had to do so much work. Maybe you had to do all the planning and all the arrangements and take care of all the stuff and you were so exhausted at the end you never even grieved. I've heard that a lot from my clients. That's why it's so important to start looking at and feeling what is it that we're experiencing in our body when we're in situations in our relationships. So imagine now, that you fought with your partner a couple weeks ago. And every time you think about that fight, you feel a little bit sick in your stomach. So now what can happen is next time we get in a fight, that sickness intensifies, or perhaps even thinking about speaking up for ourselves because we're afraid it's gonna, we're gonna get into another fight. That body, that learned body experience will prevent, can prevent us from actually communicating clearly, from actually doing the things or saying the things or not doing the things or not saying the things that we know would be the healthiest choice in a situation for us or for our partner or the most clear way to communicate because our body is reminding us like, ooh, watch out, this might not be safe. This not, might not be the smartest idea because remember last time, so those vibrational, cellular, physical feelings actually influence how we start communicating verbally, physically, emotionally, right? Body language, all the things in our relationships. So I'm a craniosacral therapist as well, and there's a book by Dr. John Upledger called Your Inner Physician and You. And it talks about how releasing the emotions from the tissue can help shift so many physical pains, but also help clear so many emotional patterns that we get stuck in. 
because many of us have kind of a go-to emotion. Some people feel sad more often or feel depressed more often or feel anxious more often or feel like they need to numb more often or they kind of dissociate and they go floaty more often, right? We all have patterns that we go into that we learn that feel safe, that support us and our well-being. So imagine instead that now you work with that vibrational cellular pattern in your mind and in your body and you start clearing that you start neutralizing that emotion through things like emotional freedom technique gestalt therapy emdr there's a lot of somatic therapies out there even massage like when i did a lot of massage therapy people often felt emotionally better because as i released the tissue sometimes the emotions released as well it's not like you have to re-experience the emotion to release them that is not true at all you do not have to re-experience every single thing in order to release it from your body and that is really empowering to know that there are many ways to work around it really really gently so imagine now you've released all that stuff. And so now when you're in your relationship, A, you don't feel as physically triggered. B, you're not going to be as emotionally triggered because now you can come at it with calm, clarity, confidence, and you can make choice on how you want to interact because your body, your energy is moving. Your body is free. Your mind is free. And when all your energy isn't stuck, when your nervous system isn't stressed out with trying to show you these physical symptoms or keep you safe or keep you protected or whatever it is that it's trying to do and that it's throwing up these flags of like, hey, watch out. Hey, watch out. Hey, this is dangerous. Sometimes it is. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's not though. So when we can clear that, you have more power in your relationship. Your emotions are less likely to be triggered, which means you have more clarity in your communication, which means that if you're one person in the relationship, then you've got your other person in the relationship or maybe more, but your relationship, you can almost consider as a third body. So when you change yourself and your reaction, you're also changing the relationship, which encourages and supports that third person also making subtle changes. My clients are often surprised by how often when they make a change in themselves, their whole relationship and the other partner changes as well. Isn't that amazing? So I hope you're able to use these tools and really tune in and find ways to release the emotions stuck in your body for yourself, whether through emotional freedom techniques or other therapies. And if you enjoy this video, there's more in the series, some back, some more to come. Subscribe. I release videos every Tuesday and Friday. So hit the bell. You'll get a notification. My name is Dawn Bennett, and I hope you have a happy, healthy, and lively, passionate, connected relationship.